Every morning when I wake up, I got a new step It's because of him I can face what's next No matter what I'm going through, he's the answer That's the reason why I sing his praise like an anthem And um, did I mention that he can't lose? I lost count of how many times he came through Strong God, ain't no mountain that he can't move And every day I just need a fresh and encounter with I you I feel renewed, refreshed I can conquer every day, no stress I can win with you And all I need is a fresh encounter with you Hi friends, thanks for joining us on today's episode of A Fresh Encounter. I'm super excited for this new teaching series that we are jumping in and it's called Believe. And part of the reason that I am so excited is because I think that it is one of the most important teaching topics that all of us need. You know, it never ceases to amaze me. It, it feels like everywhere that I look in our community and in our culture, it appears that so many people are losing faith that we no longer believe God. There are so many statistics that talk about how America is increasingly becoming a secular nation instead of one nation under God. Well, that's why we're going to talk about this important topic of faith in this teaching series. The Bible says that without faith, it is absolutely impossible to please God. So let's jump into this word that I think is critical for both you and I. We have to believe. I want you to meet me in the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 11, one verse, verse number six. As we always do, our teaching notes are out on the app, um, and you can follow along with us each week on the app, or you can follow along with us on the screens. Hebrews 11.6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe, that's the key word, that he exists and that he is the rewarder. One translation says, the NIV says, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. We are starting a new teaching series that we will be in for the next several weeks, and it is actually called Believe. And I'm firmly convinced that this is a critically important teaching series because so much of our community, so much of our country, and so much of our world reveals in a number of different ways today that more and more people are choosing to no longer believe God. Many individuals have lost confidence in, in their political, social, economic, and religious systems, particularly of their respective nations. And many people have opted out of mainstream life. Many people no longer think that there can be peace on earth or that the United Nations can prevent wars. Many people have given up on politicians to solve our national problems. Many people have given up on scientists to meet our medical and even our environmental challenges. And still other people live in a daily fear of terrorism or they live helpless as they stand by and watch the devaluation of human life through things like wars and ethnic cleansing and even abortion campaigns. Humanity, in many ways, family, has been led to what I believe is a critical crossroad. I believe that there are a number of individuals in our communities and in our country that are really wondering, is there an alternative to the world as we have made it? In essence, there are so many people that have stopped believing. Many individuals have lost faith in faith. Now, it is an absolute tragedy to lose a job, to lose a spouse, to lose a child or a home or a business. But these are not the greatest losses that one can experience. The greatest loss in life on earth is the loss of belief. When one person loses belief, you lose hope. And when hope is lost, then purpose is canceled and life is literally robbed of meaning. Why? Because belief is the raw material for commitment, 
for persistence, and even for faithfulness. Which means then that when belief is lost, then life has no explanation. It's faith that gives us hope. So if faith is lost, then hope flees like mist in the wind. A loss of faith leads to a loss of hope, which leads to despair, and then life becomes pointless and without value. This is why I submit to you that the poorest person on the planet is not the person that has very little resources in their bank account. The poorest person on the planet is the person without faith. Why? Because no man or woman can live beyond their belief. Your belief becomes really the ceiling for your life. If you believe big, then your life is full of endless possibilities um, and endless opportunities. But, but if your belief is gone, then your life shrinks because you have very little possibilities, very little opportunities, very low expectations. And that has been the enemy's plan, family, from the very beginning. If you go back and study the breakdown of what the enemy did in bringing and allowing original sin, is what the theologians call it, into the world, there are several things that happened in that original encounter with Eve and the enemy, but, but one of the most important things that the enemy did was the enemy caused Eve to doubt and ultimately no longer believe God. When he raises the question, well, did God really say it's aimed at, at sowing seeds of doubt in the heart of Eve? And that ultimately led her to not believe God. And that's been the enemy's plan from the very beginning. The enemy is not after your money. He doesn't need it. He's not after your house. He already has a place to live. He's not after your clothes. He's not after your, 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 your boo or, or anything else you think he's after. The enemy is after only one thing, and that is your faith. Because he knows if he can steal your faith and you no longer believe God, then everything else in your life will fall apart. He knows that you will ultimately be spiritually bankrupt and unable to fulfill the purpose for which God put you on the planet in the first place. This summer, my family and I took, took some time to Sabbath, and so we went, went on sabbatical, and we spent a month in Europe. First two weeks, we were in the south of Spain, Costa del Sol, Malaga, Marbella, and then we left uh, the south of Spain and spent a week on the Amalfi Coast in Italy, and then we ended... Uh, with spending a week in Paris for my daughter Eden's 16th birthday. That was her dream. She wanted a uh, sweet 16. She wanted to go to Paris. And so that's what we did. And, and Europe's a beautiful place, beautiful country. Um, south of Spain is amazing. Food's great. Malfi Coast is breathtaking. And, and there's some things that I do like about Paris. But, but one thing I don't like about Paris is that um, they don't have a lot of available public restrooms. And, and then the few public restrooms that are available, you have to pay for. And, and so it happened a couple of times. We were at the Louvre Museum and wanted to go see the Mona Lisa. And then I had to go to the restroom. And, and, and it was like one of those kind of times where you start praying, right? You know, <laughs> when you really start talking to the Lord uh, because you got to get to the restroom. But here's the thing. To, to, to use the restroom, you have to. Um, pay money and they don't accept in in Europe the dollar the currency in Europe is the euro and sure enough I was at the Louvre Museum and I'm you know holding it trying to get to the restroom and I get there and I'm trying to pull out a dollar and the guy says no sir we need euros and then there was another time that uh, we were on the Champs Elysees, the main drag, and walking up and down the street, beautiful day. And uh, man, I was like, oh my gosh, I was drinking too much water, gotta go to the restroom. And then I go in the store, I'm like, can I use your restroom? And they're like, no. <laughs> and so I had to run around finding a restroom. Then I find a restroom, and the line is long and around the corner. And, and so that's when you really start doing, you know, you start doing the dance and you start trying to take your mind off and you start praying like, Lord, I really need you to help me right now. And I stood in that line all that time. And then you get to the door and the door has a, a little mechanism where you have to drop a coin 
in the door to get in the bathroom. Not a quarter, not a dime, not a nickel, not a penny, a euro. So I'm grateful that I was able to have the right currency because if I didn't, it, it, it would not have been nice. But I was dancing and dancing and dancing, and I was like, oh, Lord, thank you that I got a euro so I can get in the restroom to transact business. I'm telling you that because some of us are dancing and we're praying and we're crying out to the Lord and we're trying to transact kingdom business. But the problem is we do not have the right currency. Faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. This is why the Bible spends so much time talking about faith in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And this is why Hebrews 11, 6 is so important. And it's the key verse of this entire teaching series that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to the Lord must first believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can sum up that entire verse. You can sum up this entire teaching series with this one statement. If you want to please God, believe God. That's so good, I'm going to say it again. If you want to please God, believe God. And so we're going to take some time and really walk through this scripturally, and let's start here. So then what, what, what is faith? What is faith? Faith is one of the most abused, misused, and misunderstood concepts in humanity. And throughout History, faith has been perceived in many different ways, both inside and outside of religion. And unfortunately, in the name of faith, people have, have raped, pillaged, plundered, oppressed, and murdered on a massive scale. Over the past 100 years, more people have been killed for their faith and in the name of faith than in every preceding century of history combined. And in many of those cases, the sad part about all of this is that in many of those cases, those perpetrators, the people that did the killing, did so with the belief that they were serving God. Even within the Christian church, faith has been abused and misappropriated for selfish gain. So often that now we're in a season where the church is under attack and held in contempt by people who don't really even understand it. So what exactly is faith? How do we define it biblically and truthfully away from all of the misinterpretations, misunderstandings, and misuses? If we're going to do that, then we got to start at Hebrews 11 and 1. And Hebrews 11 and 1 says this. This is the NIV version. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. The Greek word for faith in the New Testament is, is pistis. This is what this word is when it says now faith in the Greek, it's pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I -I now pistis means belief, but more than just a casual belief or a casual acceptance. Pistis refers to a deeply held belief. In Greek, there are multiple definitions for one word. And so pistis also means to be persuaded. So somebody who has pistis is persuaded at a deep level of belief that something is true. Another way to describe pistis is to understand it this way, that, that faith is confident expectation. This is what the Hebrew writer means in Hebrews 11.1, 1, that this, this confident expectation is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So we cannot have true faith. We cannot have true pistis and not expect something to happen. With pistis, we confidently expect and patiently wait for God to act for our good and his glory. Watch this. Even when we can see no visible evidence of anything happening. Are you ready for TWC's At The Movie series? 
It's an unforgettable summer experience that brings movie and ministry together. Yes, in the midst of some of Hollywood's blockbuster hits is an underlining message from the Word of God. So join us Sunday, June 30th through Sunday, July 21st for four powerful messages and life lessons for adults and kids that align with our faith and values. Are you ready for TWC's Back to School Emerge Night? This year will be better than ever. A silent party, kids blitz, bouncy houses, food trucks, and free back to school haircuts. Mark your calendar and register your kindergarten through 12th grader now for TWC's Back to School Emerge Night. Friday, August 2nd from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Derby Campus. The Worship Center Christian Church proudly announces its inaugural soundtrack, the Journey to Believe, which is now available on all digital streaming platforms. The Journey to Believe is more than just a collection of songs. It is a vibrant fusion of storytelling, soul-stirring music, resonating with the sound of gospel and echoing the enduring spirit of faith, providing a deep musical exploration of biblical events. Download it now and experience this melodic journey to believe that celebrates the transformative power of trusting God. The Faith Over Fear collection by Inspiration Apparel is live now for men and women. It's a reminder of God's promise in Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord, He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Shop Inspiration Apparel today. Remember, don't just hear the message, wear the message. That's it for today's news, family. Visit TWCCC.org for full details of each event. Have, Have an, an incredible, incredible week, family. Now, I love the King James translation of Hebrews 11.1 1 because, interestingly enough, in that original translation, there, there, are some, there are some things that the King James actually gets right that are lost in other translations. The, the, the old King Jimmy version of Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why is this version so important? Because what the King James Version captures is that in the original Greek, the Hebrew writer clearly defines what faith is in three words. Faith, substance, and evidence. Now faith, we understand what faith is, pistis, a deeply held belief, a, a confident expectation. That's pistis. But now let's talk about substance. The Greek word that, that is translated to, to English, the English word of substance, that Greek word literally means to stand under and to support. So faith is to the believer what a foundation is to a house. When, when a builder builds a house, the first thing that the builder is going to do is that they're going to lay the foundation. And then they are going to inspect the foundation and make sure that the foundation is strong enough because if you don't have a strong foundation, they can't frame the house, they can't build on top of it. So, so when it says, now faith, pistis, is the substance. Substance means to literally stand under to support. The substance, watch this, is the confident assurance that you are standing on and that you are building on. Some of you are thinking, well, how do I, how do I know that I'm, that I'm standing on that? Well, because of the third word, evidence. That word evidence in the Greek literally means, watch this, an inward conviction from God that what he has promised he will perform. It's an inward conviction that God will keep his word. Now, let's put it all together. Now faith, pistis, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's put it together. Faith, pistis, deeply held belief, a confident expectation. How can you have a confident expectation? Because you got substance. I'm standing on and I'm building on a firm foundation. How do you know that? Because I got evidence. I have an inward conviction from God 
that he will keep his word and that what he promised he will perform. Y'all, y'all, y'all not with me yet. What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, pistis, deeply held belief, a confident expectation. How can you be confident? Because I got substance. Because what I am standing on and building on is a firm foundation. How do you know your foundation is firm? Because I got evidence. Because I have this inward conviction that God will keep his word. That exactly what he promised, he will perform. Now, I need to clarify something right here. Everything that I have just defined for you of what faith is, is not the same thing as worldly hope. Worldly hope is when we hope for something, but we have no certainty that we're going to receive it. Worldly hope is, I hope I get this job. I hope I get this promotion. But you don't have any certainty that you're going to get it. That's not biblical faith. That's not real faith. Real faith, biblical faith is not, I hope so. No, biblical faith is certain because it is anchored on the integrity and promises of the word of God. So when you read Hebrews 11 and you start reading about all of these individuals that lived by faith and were commended by faith, there are certain things you need to understand. You need to understand that a lot of what they did didn't make sense to anybody else and people laughed at them. You mean, Abraham, you're going to leave everything that you know you're going to leave the comfort of your family home and where you're going to go. I don't really know, but God's going to show me. That makes no sense. So then you got to raise the question of, well, how was he able to do that? Because he had pistis, a deeply held belief, a confident expectation. He had pistis because he had substance. He knew that he wasn't just taking his family on thin air. He was standing on and building on a firm foundation. Why? Because he had evidence. He had the inward conviction that God who gave him the word that said, now leave and I will make you the father of many nations, that God was going to do what he said he was going to do in his word. You got to know that when Noah started building the ark, when God told him it was going to rain and it had never rained before. And people see Noah building this massive thing. Noah, what you doing? Building an ark. What's an ark? Uh, it's a boat. Why do you need a boat? Because it's going to rain. What is rain? Noah, you, you, didn't, you didn't have too much wine. You got to know people laughed at him. But, but why did he keep building? Because he had pistis. A deeply held belief. A confident expectation. Why? Because... He has substance. He was building that boat on a firm foundation. Why? Because there was evidence. Because he had an inward conviction that God was going to keep his word. He said it's going to rain. I don't know when. I don't even know what rain is. But God said it's coming. And so what I want you to understand is when you understand what real biblical faith is, it drives you to action. When you have pistis, when you have substance, and when you have evidence, it drives you to action. This is why James 2.26 says faith without works is what? Because real biblical faith results in, produces action and good works, not the other way around. You can do a whole bunch of great works and still not have faith. But you cannot have faith without faith producing action in your life. Let me show it to you in the scriptures. Meet me in Matthew 9 and verse 27. It says, as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind man came to him and asked him, and he asked them rather, do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Real biblical faith is real straightforward, very practical. These two blind men come to Jesus. They need him to heal them. And notice that Jesus doesn't ask them, how many prayers have you prayed? He doesn't ask them, how many of the 21 days did you do a financial fast? He only had one question. Do you believe that I can do this? 
Translation, do you have the right currency to get into the restroom? And I want to show you these guys. They had pistis. They had a deeply held belief if we can just get to Jesus, he can heal us. Why did they have that pistis? Because they had substance. They, they, they were walking to Jesus on a sure foundation. Why? Because they had evidence. Because of his word. What do you mean his word? They call Jesus the son of David. They call him Lord. Now, that son of David title comes, all, it goes all the way back, or it comes from the promise that God makes to David. That David would have a kingdom that would have no end. Meaning that even after Solomon, that there was someone in the line of David who was coming, whose kingdom would have no end. So they say son of David because they remember that, wait a minute, God promised that David's descendants would have a kingdom that would not end. And so they say son of David, they say Lord because they knew what God promised. Lord, son of David, king, that means you are over our blindness. That means you're Lord of our blindness. You're Lord over our ailments. You're Lord over our illness. And so they have evidence because they believe that this is the word that God spoke all the way going back to David. Well, friends, listen, I know that you were blessed on today's episode. I really hope you were, but I'm going to believe it by faith that this episode has made a significant impact in your life. And if so, I want to encourage you to do a couple things. If you live within any vicinity of our physical campuses, we would love to see you in person. And even if you don't, if you are joining us from different parts of our country and even our world, well, then guess what? Our app and our online campus is the place for you to connect. So you can be a part of our television audience, our online campus, or you can meet us at any one of our physical campuses. And you can also make decisions to take next steps. If you've never accepted Christ in your life, if you're looking for a local church to plug in, a great community to be a part of, that's why the Worship Center is here for you. And I hope that you would use our app or go online to our website and make your next step decision for Christ. Also pray that if this television broadcast has blessed you and added any value to your life, that you would consider sowing a seed to help us continue to enlarge this broadcast and spread the hope and the Word of God to people far and near. Well, I look forward to next time because I will be right back with a new word ready to meet you on A Fresh Encounter. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Fresh Encounter. For more from Van Moody, visit vanmoody.org, where you can access free resources, subscribe to the Freedom Podcast, as well as find great gift ideas for yourself or a friend. Also, be sure to connect with us on all social media platforms. We look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Encounter.